Hi everyone, welcome to the June 2021 Frequency Freaks Workshop. My name is Scott, thanks for joining us. This month we have another in our series of interviews, Portraits of Our Community, this time with Michael Palumbo. Great interview just coming up. We also have a number of performances, fantastic performances, from other members of our community uh, lined up, so we hope you can stay with us. Quick reminder that the Frequency Freaks store is online with blank Euro rack panels, t-shirts, mugs, all kinds of other great swag. You can find that at www.freakfreaks.com and click on the shop button in the top left corner. We hope you're having a fantastic summer and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Portraits of our community. We've, uh, we're being joined by Michael Palumbo. Thanks very much for making the time to uh, to speak with us today, Michael. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm drinking uh, coffee out of a curling mug. And, uh, <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, How Canadian. <laughs> yeah, it's, you can see maybe there's there's the house on the inside. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. And okay. uh, I like I curl, and I'm a big fan. My 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 partner gave me uh, a matching espresso cup. It's like. Tiny, oh, like a teeny tiny curling and it, drum. Yeah, and the, there's like a little broom for stirring the. Oh, that's brilliant! I'm so, yeah. it. Uh, yeah, yeah, curling is a quintessentially Canadian activity. I, I, I've always fascinated by it. I've tried it once or twice myself, and it was just like I, I couldn't do it very well. But man, it was a lot of fun. I could really. It's, a, it. it's super hard and a ton of fun, and you, you, you know, because you're shouting at each other in pirate slang and like putting a little <laughs> putting a little whiskey in your coffee ahead of time, and then. The winner buys the losing team a round of drinks afterwards. Right. You, you don't really. It's competitive. I love really trying yeah. hard at it, but it's yeah. also fun to not do well in it. Right. Anyway, yes. You know, yeah. like you're There's much you're just going camaraderie and winning. winning. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's the yeah the team the team aspect of it's super interesting. But anyway, so I'm I'm doing cool. well and reminiscing and missing the curling club just down the street tremendously. So. Well, I'm sure yeah. soon enough we'll all be able to uh, get back to our uh, our face to face activities. I think we're. Uh, we're all looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, so I guess uh, to start with, uh, I'm curious to know how you got uh, involved uh, in music and electronic music and I guess ultimately modular, you know. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I grew up playing music. Uh, I was very fortunate that my both my parents felt it was really important that we be exposed to music. Um, so I, I started singing. I, I played saxophone from, I think, grade four onward. Hmm. Um, uh, I, I got into guitar when I was in grade 10 because my uh, shop teacher, like the, 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 the wood shop, showed up one day with a guitar he built and I was like, I want, I want to build one. So I, right. I built, started building something and then wow. found myself like, like, I don't know, I think probably everyone plays Smoke on the Water on a one string and then they, they decide now they can play guitar or whatever, but yeah, that's, that's, the, at least that was my, my way in and, um, but then, like it, it uh, so yeah, I was like into guitar, and I remember like from a pretty early point, even when I played saxophone, I was really interested in timbre. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that the timbre was a thing, but I just, I was more concerned. I became more and more and more concerned with like how the instrument sounded and how I could make it sound than, mm -hmm. than soloists. I mean, mm -hmm. my favorite guitarist was and might still be Jeff Beck just because of what he can make the guitar sound like. His right. phrasing is stunning. Yes. His phrasing is really cool, but the, he pulls all these neat sounds out of the out of right. a strap. Right. Um so yeah, I started going further in that direction. I remember like one time I plugged my I had I, I it's not here, but I have a guitar with two P90s. Mm. And I plugged it in to my wah pedal, like in grade twelve, backwards by accident, and it started doing this like whale sound sound. Yes, right? it's like yes. this feedback loop, which eventually is like that's that's what David Gilmore was doing on on Echoes, I think. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just like like little happenstances like that, I um, I just get more and more into it. Um, in my twenties, I was I was a pedal head. I had tons of guitar pedals. I had a a big Vibrolux reverb that I could like make really cool controlled feedback and I was really mm -hmm. interested in prepared guitar and playing with feedback and I remember like I just remember thinking like oh man like I I, I wish there was a school where I could just study guitar pedals you know and then I got lucky I found out that there was a program at Concordia University that was studied on electroacoustics so mm -hmm. 
I went and did my Bachelor of Fine Arts in. Uh, oh, that's really cool. Years. I didn't know you uh, you went to Concordia. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was funny because like I I like I kind of eschewed guitar by the time I got there. I wasn't into pedals. I was just into programming pure data. I was like, well, this like if I can program it, then I can do anything. I, yes. Um, and I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of almost making no music and just making cool patches. And, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. So fast forward to like modular, I, I had felt so separated, separated and distanced from music and experimenting with music for a few years. And mm -hmm. a friend got me into modular, and it what it did was it bounded, it bounded my thirst for like wanting to design code or design systems. Mm -hmm. It bounded it by music, because I no longer could I just sit and patch and not necessarily hear anything and be entertained. Mm -hmm. I was I was patching and the music was a part of it. So right. it, it, it it and I loved that. I loved that like almost anything I did, other than patching something that doesn't end up going somewhere, almost anything I did, it, it still was bounded by by sound and music. Right. And so it, right. it, it would it, generate sound as you went. It became an interactive sonic experience. Yeah, the, 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 the programming was, uh, I guess, it was very difficult to escape sound. Right. With kind of like real-time real -time coding with cables, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was like, it's like live coding in, in, <clears throat> right. in, a, in a sense, yeah. Um, and do you have an interest in live coding? Is that something that you've tried or that you like? I've tried some live coding. I did some Super Collider a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I've done live patching in Max in performances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, that 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 VR synth that I'm working on is yeah. Is, tell us a little, little bit more for for people who don't know about that. Tell oh us. yeah, sure. So it's um, yeah. So my 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 PhD work is all about um, looking at uh, looking at ways to document changes made to uh, like an idea. So mm -hmm. in the way that in the way that software developers use this archival system called Git um, to track track changes essentially, but and, and specifically what they're doing is they're tracking like what has changed from a version to another version to another version. Mm -hmm. And then when you have these, these changes, you can start at any point in time and then just add the changes leading to another point to construct mm -hmm. the document in that version later on. Anyway, I'm getting into the weeds, but my, my interest, my, my sort of ultimate goal with this is to be able to um, improvise with, with changes. So improvise with um, a version of a synthesizer, and like if you, if I have this patch right here, for instance, mm -hmm. right, and and if I take from the blank patch, all the steps I took to get to where it is, including every incremental knob position, right, is all logged in a, in a series of, of changes. Right. What I would like to be able to do is then go back at some point in time, start from that point, and then go off in a different direction. Right. 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 Um, or Go back in time, find this position, mm -hmm. jump ahead a little bit to this position, mm -hmm. and then put them side by side and fold different parts of them together. You know, wow. um, so that's 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 what I'm working on. I'm working so on essentially, a, essentially a sta instantiate the dynamic process to be able to reinstantiate the dynamic process, the creative process of patching, uh, and and to be able to make variations on that. Yeah, and yeah. and like and my my sort of current fascination is the idea that like if you take what I'm calling like a region of history, a, a region of history, so start in an endpoint and mm -hmm. you loop it, it it would be a sequencer, right? Like you're looping these, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. They, each change you're making, if it's resulting in a change to sound, you could make those sounds happen again, again, potentially yeah. exactly the same way if, yeah. Yeah. if you're looping those changes. So. Um, so to come back to the the question of what is this VR modular synth? It's, the idea is it's a it's a modular synthesizer in VR, but the the one of the fundamental components of it is this ability to play with the history mm -hmm. of your playing, or play with the history of someone else's playing, or right. do so with two people in the room looping right. regions of history and right. things like that. So. So essentially, the holy grail for modular of reproducibility. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but but I think with, so, but yeah. interactive reproducibility, not just a static recording, but but the ability to actually alter it and and review it and, and sort of engage with it at, at its various different historic moments at quantum. At quantum yeah, moments. and 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 what does the third dimension in 
virtualized synthesis offer, right? Yeah. Like, right. Um, does does the does the third dimension offer thinking about or viewing history uh, changes uh, viewing time? Like, what's the timeline? Is it is it left to right or is it like this? And and yes, yes. Um, might yeah. might each of the versions be stacked for like in distance? Yes. If I turn them, can I? Yes. You know, Anyway, uh, I don't know yet. These are kind of open questions. Well, this is uh, this all sounds this all sounds wonderful because certainly I know I, I speak for a number of people, <clears throat> excuse me, in our community who, you know, struggle with the concept of you know modular as 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 being a one time the ephemerality of it. Sure, exactly. That thank you. That's a beautiful way of putting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Robin Heisey, you know, um, argues quite staunchly that that art need not have any artifact. That the two are mm. much, much separate, and, uh, 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 and, and by extension, uh, I, don't, I can't attribute this to Robin, but he might very well say that you know, uh, the production or, or focus on artifact is one thing. The production of art might very well be something different, allied, but not necessarily the same. It seems like what you're doing, which just sounds so fascinating, is it is it really it engages both parts, and at, at least it, yes. it or perhaps removes any concern about that that whole duality so that's uh, that's quite fascinating maybe uh, at some point in the future uh, I'd love to interview you some more specifically on this because I think it's a, it's a it's a, a whole rabbit hole in the universe itself so. yeah would be happy to show you and, and I, I will just say that yes I, I, I do think that I'm I think I'm I think I'm more interested in process I think that's why I, I, I appreciate the ephemerality of it I love striking the patch and, and starting again and not, oh, okay. yeah. not needing to hold on to anything yes um, and, but I also do enjoy the thought of encountering someone else's process and making my own choice as to what what point in their process do I think is the most interesting thing to then start playing with instead right. of maybe, maybe their final version is what I remix, you know? Right, right. And essentially a, a um, along, the, along the lines, conceptual lines of remix, mm. it, it also offers, I think, a really interesting opportunity to interact with a performance you can you can uh you can experience it as if you were a, a passive viewer but at the mm -hmm. same time at a certain moment you can choose to engage and then and then evolve from there and and yet with the the bounding and with all of the context that has been provided by the original uh designer the original right and, so and, and you're not changing what they did because that's right. the, your history is being recorded right that's right so that's right. For others, for others to choose to, to work with or not down the road if they want to, sort of a uh, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. That's exactly it. That's the creative process. That's so. the that's that's how I sort of am approaching the idea of distributed creativity. Yep. Well, that's that's deeply fascinating. As I said, I cool. think I think this deserves a, a, a separate conversation in some depth. That I hope uh, hope you'll contemplate uh, doing that with us. Happy to so, do so. Yeah. So, apropos of that, then. Um, uh, n do you find that there's a uh, for, for you is there any kind of separation or duality between your you know your 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 VR modular work mm. and and your and your physical modular work and also I guess you know does one tend to influence the other or have you found that there have you know that they bled into each other in, in interesting ways that's a great question um... Yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, we so uh, Graham Wakefield and Alexander Zonta and I are the, the three people working on this. We a paper we we wrote recently. We're looking at the the, the concept of translation, and taking uh, the the idea being like if if modular synth didn't exist before VR and was first created in VR, what might it have and what mm -hmm. might it not have? Mm -hmm. Is one thing we're sort of curious about, and another thing is, well, now that this exists and it has a history and there's 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 um, uh, there's aspects of it that are really sort of you wouldn't dream of not having, you know, like like cables, let's say. Um, what 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 gets translated into into a virtualized context? Why should it be vir translated? Uh, should it be? Should some things be left behind, um, like the wood panels that we see in in, yeah, the, in the DAW? Yes. yes. Which 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 gives a, a certain index to a to a feeling or to a to a, a sense of realness or something, right? Yes. Um, so I, like that, I think is more where I think a lot of my I think that's more of where where my head's been at in terms of occupying those two worlds because I'm still very focused on being the designer of this of this thing, right? And not I haven't played it as much yet. Um, mm -hmm. I'm so buried in in making it work. 
Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I can say is like one thing that that I um, am we're thrilled about is that we we made it so that all knobs are also inlets. And when you, oh, cool. And when you plug a jack into a knob, it then yeah. becomes an attenuator for right. that inlet, right? So it's a great like, idea. Yeah, and and um and it's maybe speaking to when I'm when I'm patching this thing, sometimes I'm thinking, well, why wasn't there an attenuator on this yes. inlet? You know? Yes. Yeah. But no, I think I think I'm in terms of like whether I play that or I play this, um I, I've logged more hours on this. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still uh, we're doing a rewrite of the VR system for the purpose of, of making the sound better. So I'm still happier with, I think, how this sounds at the moment. Right, but, right. Um, and I, I um, yeah, and anyway, well, I can show it to you later. But um, yeah, uh, I think, I think, okay, here's what I'll say, is that um, when I'm playing this thing, and I've noticed it more lately, I feel really exposed. Mm -hmm. I feel exposed in a way that, I don't feel exposed as much when I'm playing drums. It's kind of protected by this cage of, right, of, right. of, of apparatus, you know? Yes. Um, and, re and more recently, I've been incorporating, like, well, uh, just a little microphone into my into Yes, I've done it, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, it's, and I think that's really about, um, for me, appreciating that when I'm, when I'm my happiest playing, it's when I'm vulnerable. Yes. Like, like really trying to create a situation where I'm vulnerable and susceptible to the things around me, be it other performers, mm -hmm. how I'm feeling, mm -hmm. you know, how my partner's doing, what the, what, yes. what the world is, is up to. Um, and so I don't yet feel that way in the VR space. I feel very safe and protected in the way that, like, if Mario jumps down a hole and dies, I, I don't feel for him, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so um, performance, is it reasonable to say then that performance for you in the real space is in the physical in the physical world is um, more um, a response or a reactive kind of thing to all of the environmental variables, whereas in the VR space, is it more about a flight of the imagination or a connection, sort of a more... Oh, man. I no, uh, playing the modular is, is so much about imagination. Like playing this, you know, like, um, but but I, I should also clarify that like I haven't performed the VR thing yet, you know? Right. So like, you know, maybe out of, out of future frequency freaks, I can do a live stream or a video of it or something. But Yeah, I'd love that. Um, you know, and, and I think in that, and maybe in, in that sense, you know, like, um, especially if I was to put a camera on my body doing it while I'm, you know, yes. Then yeah. I would I would feel exposed again. You know. Yes. Um. So maybe it's more speaking to just the experiences I've had with this versus that other. Sure. System. Sure. That that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Super. So now you know you've spoken a bit. Obviously, you sort of alluded to a bit your process. Mm -hmm. um, so what I mean by that is, do, you know, a number a number of people in our community tend to. I don't want to say bring a, a rigidity, but they they sort of come with a fairly sort of standardized set of moves to to begin engaging with the okay. issue. Do you have a, a sort of a, a preference for that kind of thing? Do you do that, or is every time for the first time for you? Well, it always feels like the first time, you know. Yes. And there are things about it that are firsts every time. Mm -hmm. uh, I have aesthetics, though. I I really like clicks. I really yeah, like you do like micro sounds, don't you? I love yeah. micro sound, yeah. yeah. And so um, when I learned that you could send a gate signal into a filter input to ping it, that opened doors to me. Um, right. So I really like I like I like I've I've always been a fan of granular synthesis back when I was working with Pure Data and then later on Max MSP. Yes. Um, and. But in 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 this context, like, it feels like I'm I'm not working with a granular module. I'm I'm constructing the grains like individually. Yes. I, I really like thinking about it like I want to be able to touch every single grain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, and pinging a filter really lets me I think have have a sense of that sort of uh, that, that resolution of control I could say. So so that's that's part of my process. Um, Another part of my process is just really being very aware of the stereo field and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really positioning sounds there. Um, and and a not hat to your Concordia electroacoustic education, perhaps. Yeah, the multi-channel stuff. I think yeah. so. 
Yeah. I, I would say I would say more of the more of the attention to detail in every single grain really comes. I mean, in particular, my the professor I had there, uh, Eldad Sabari. Mm -hmm. He he was our ear training professor, electroacoustic ear training. Mm -hmm. You know, and and like he really impressed upon me that like, you know, if a sound, I mean, I maybe I'm sort of I don't know if I'm I'm going to paraphrase here, but the if a sound repeats itself like two or three times without any variation. And, and that's not intentional. Like it, you could really lose the audience. You could really yeah, lose exactly. somebody, yeah. right? So, um, so that's why, like you know, again, like when I can ping the QPOS filter, for instance, and have maybe a couple little sources of modulation going into some of the spread, just a little bit, it can create little. You know, if we're talking from the granular, uh, the concept of granular granularity, it's like little grains of sand that have slightly different edges to them. And, yes. You know. Um, Different densities and uh, yeah. they're hitting different materials, maybe eventually. But right. yeah, yeah. Um, and I think the other thing I can say is uh, my color scheme is just based on cable length. Uh, I know some people right. will do it based on like you know what to to help them keep track in terms of what what it might be doing or anything yes. like that. But yeah. for me, it's just like you know when I do this to get cables, I want to make sure I'm getting the right thing out. You know, right. so right. yes, yeah. And do you um, obviously uh, you know there's a lot to learn uh, mm. sort of uh, I guess multiple disciplines to focus in or that you could focus in uh, yeah. when you're working so uh, there's obviously there's programming and sound design there's there's performance there's recording there's editing there's you know mastering whatever do you um, do you take any kind of structured approach to your to your time in the studio in that in that regard or is it do you go with you know by feel how do you handle that. Uh... I guess it depends on it, it, it can depend in a performance, um, which is most of what I'm doing uh, is, is live improvisation. Through your exit, your exit points session is that right? Yeah, with exit points and with others as well. I, I, the very next day, I also did a gig uh, with a trio um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, called Void Ambience um, with Joel Ong and and Kavi. Cool. Um, yeah, and and so I think like. Um, in, in in that case, like I'm really, I'm really trying to be as 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 considerate of other people in the space as I can be. Mm -hmm. um, for a while, when I was performing in venues, like my aesthetic was playing, trying to play as quiet as quiet as I could, be, really sitting back, yeah. um, so that like I almost like I was like conditioning the environment, and that yeah. and that if I brought something in, it would really be striking, it's but also. If I took it away, it would be noticeable as well, but but not not obvious why what has maybe changed right. and um, and it also maybe makes people kind of like lean in a little bit to to, to hear it because yes. it's just this yeah. you know and and the modular can take over it can drown everybody out if you want it to so yes. Yes. I, I enjoyed that aspect of it um, right. I think it coincided with me being anxious about being heard too so right so I, right. I tried to sort of make 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 a strength out of that but um, right. I think. You know, I think now it's um, it's yeah. I think it's just um, I I I don't know. It's I I just listen. I listen yeah. and I, I try to be as as uh, I try to make as much space as others for others to play as possible. And if if I can't hear myself, I turn down. That's that's my approach. If I can't hear myself, I turn down so that I hear what's missing from the mix rather yes. than turning up so that right. nobody, then there's this war. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and apropos of that, then uh, uh, sort of indirectly, you know, who would you consider to be your, you know, both your past and your, uh, beyond Jeff Beck, uh, your, your past musical influences and your current, you know, musical influences? Oh, yeah. Too. I'm really, so there's, a, there's an album by John Hassel, who's a trumpeter. Mm -hmm. I trumpet player rather. He, he did some. Uh, he's he's been he's been long been prolific. But um, uh, seeing seeing through pictures, I think, is the album from twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. I just I've had that on loop for for a few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Niels Fromm, I'm a big fan of. Um, Alvin Noto and Ryuichi Sakamoto. I don't mm -hmm. think. Yes. I don't think I go a single like I teach JavaScript and Maxim SP and, and programming and stuff, and mm -hmm. I don't think I go a single lesson without having. You know, nice. some sort of Japanese minimal noise music slightly in the background. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm a yeah, so I'm a big fan of 
I mean, for Aldo Noto, it's the it's the sort of the glitchy time and the the use of clicks in a really like every click that he employs um, is so distinct and and I and it's it's really engaging. So sounds sounds um, like highly conscious music. How do you mean? Um, each click is is seems intentional. Is that what you were saying? Mm. Yeah, it's it's yeah it, yeah, and and there's a there's a craft to it. Like they, they were they were crafted with some care, maybe. Um, right. uh, I can't speak to his process. Maybe he would disagree, but right. um, but that's At what I get from you. Receive it. That's how you receive I love it. it. Yeah, I can't can't get enough of that. Um, yeah, I think I think honestly, like more. So, I think all. I think more so than any. Uh, um, was it Otomo Yoshide? Is that and Ryoji Ikeda or other okay. uh, other performers that I, I really take to their use of um, just the the. the they, the immaculate work with high spec, high high frequency content, um, um, and yeah, I guess those those clicks, granular clicks, um, is mostly. I'm usually thinking of of those cats when I'm doing right. doing the granular stuff. That's it's usually what I'm what I'm after. Cool. And apropos of that, is there any uh, particular piece of gear that you're focusing on at the moment, or that you're enamored with? Yeah, could I show you? Absolutely. I'm I'm a big fan of the Tempe. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying twigs, and so I'm, ge I'm generating clicks out of Tempe and twigs, mm -hmm. um, and I'm enjoying Felistri in terms of uh, uh, creating shapes that I can uh, ping the QPOS with. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm generally just experimenting with either just gates out of this into QPOS, but more recently um, putting very, very, very short functions out of uh, Felistri into the QPOS. Mm -hmm. um, and then with QPOS, I'll come out of typically the, the two high pass outputs with like a high Q. And for the longest times, I was just running that into uh, Magneto. Yes. And sometimes I would run that into Mimeophon. Mm -hmm. um, but recently, I um, have just been experimenting running it through Panharmonium because then I can I can create a really rich like harmon harmonic content with the, yes. the clicks. Yep. Um, and it, I find it it's it's a lot more. Um, how can I put this? I, I can extend the usage of the clicks because I can um, do something as simple as resynthesize them using different wave shapes, or yes. resynthesize them with a, a, a narrower band, or um, it, you know start to get some feedback in there. So um, that's a that's a big part of of, of how I. How I've been approaching it. Cool. Um, so I guess the, the, the you know the other questions that I have are sort of you know a bit more in ge general in nature. How did you uh, how did you come to find out? How did you learn about uh, frequency freaks? Oh boy, a few different things. I think. I mean, it just it's one of those things where between array space and what's Rob Crookshank up to, and uh, you know, like. Um, I think probably like you know recommended Facebook events. Sorry, Rob, I didn't mean to single out there, but I <laughs> endlessly. Don't worry, we're going to get to interviewing Rob as well. <laughs> endlessly fascinated by you, right? So, um, so there, uh, you know, just yeah, I think it was just it just got to a point where there was a critical mass of 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 things going on towards frequency breaks. I'm wrong. You know what? It was my friend Brian Sue who who introduced me to it. Oh, Brian. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, Brian Sue is uh, the one that he lent me a couple modules one day. He was like, "You, you, you do. You're into electroacoustics, and you, you don't do modular. You, you should, you should really, <laughs> you know." And then he has to send me down this whole journey. So, big thanks to him. Endless yeah. thanks to him. He's, he's such a sweet guy. And um, uh, and sort of what what draws you to the to the frequency freaks group, or what do you get from it? Oh. I mean, it's um, it's nice. It's always nice being amongst people who are into into similar things that you are. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um, I love the the just show up and show off your system like that. That was right. a, yeah. a. I mean, that's kind of what we want to do, right? Is is talk about this thing that we're fascinated with. Yes. Um, the the talks were cool. Um, I think I also like Paul's just a very um, he's a deeply my experience of him is he's a deeply caring individual, and yes. he really cares that that that. Um, I think he I think he cares that the the thing that we're all passionate in is something that 
we can uh, that, that we see each other. You know that we that it's that it's it's yeah. it's it is it is something that I could sit here for days and not talk to anybody and get so engrossed yeah. in, and that's yeah. a great thing. But it's really nice to do that around some other people. You know. Sure. So, sure. So, so the social, as much as anything, the social component of it. Yeah, we, we when we started this call, I was telling you about uh, my curling. I was telling you about my neighbors, the fact that, um, you know, like that we got into gardening because that neighbor got into got us into it, that we just surrounded by really great people. Community is super important to me. So, right. I, you know. I agree completely. I, I think uh, in the final analysis for me personally, community is what makes this all worthwhile. I, I have my... You know my personal endeavors, and as you said, I could I could be cooped up in a room with my equipment for you know forever by myself. But somehow I feel that that would be hollow. It, 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 uh, for me, it involves you know bringing the fruits of that back to to you and to everybody, and and uh, somehow contextualizing it. It, give, it gives it meaning, I guess. For it, is, is what it yeah, it does. It does, and 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 also I think like um, I, it's even making me like kind of reflect on the fact that I I don't I don't spend. I don't know that I spend that much time doing it alone. I like doing it with others. As do I. Yeah. 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 Very, much so. Very much so. And that and that was back to my point earlier about about you know performance as reaction. I find mm -hmm. for me, the, you know, creation of sound and creation of music is is call and response. Even mm -hmm. if it's not you know formally structured that way, I'm hearing what you're doing, and I'm responding you know to that. So that that mm -hmm. was. Uh, perhaps what I was talking about back to your point of exposure is it's perhaps a bit you know it's it's a bit about creating that that linkage between me and the and the other performers and the audience yes it's it's it has, I think it's dialogical you need to be able to you need to, you need to listen you know? very much so, very Can't much help so. But listen yeah. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure uh, talking with you. And it's, everything that you're working on is so fascinating. I hope you'll come back and, uh, and give us another presentation about your, about your virtual modular, but also your, 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 your physical modular and your approach. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's figure something out. That'd be, I'd love to do that. And um, yeah, and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll prepare a, a clicky, clicky voice performance for you in the, in the coming days and send it over. Excellent. Yeah, we're looking forward to today's performance, so I'm really uh, I'm really excited about that. And, uh, Super. So we wish you the best. Obviously, we're, we miss you terribly. We're looking forward to getting together and seeing you face-to-face. Yeah. -face. I really hope that uh, you and uh, all of your loved ones keep well and remain happy. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, likewise. Likewise. Yeah, thanks Absolutely. very much.
Oh, <laughs> 
Thank <laughs> you.